OK, so in the process of going through uh, these videos, what we've come across are a few different ways of solving quadratic equations. So far, we've looked at factorising, and we've also looked at completing the square, which we've, um, we've been solving when we've tried to find where a curve has crossed the x-axis. And of course, you'll be more used to using the quadratic formula. So there are actually three ways that you can solve a quadratic equation. You can utilize factorization. You can complete the square and solve. Or you've got the quadratic formula. Okay, now not all quadratics will factorize, okay? This is a fact. So, uh, or rather, they won't factorize nicely, certainly, but some don't factorize at all. Um, and so, that would mean that we would have to uh, use one of these other two methods. So, it's always good to try and factorize something first. It's all really dependent on the numbers in the question. There are some numbers that, you know, if I had an 8x squared, I wouldn't particularly want to try and factorize that. I might go straight into using uh, the quadratic formula. Um, it's really down to, um, you know, how much practice you have with this, how much you've kind of worked with them, and it's really also down to a bit of personal taste as well. So, if I was to factorise this quadratic, then we can do 2 times the minus 4. So, 2 times the minus 4 gets me minus 8. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to make the minus 8, but add together to make the minus 7. Okay? So, what will we have there? So, we could have um, minus 8 and plus 1. So we could rewrite this as 2x squared minus 8x plus x minus 4 equals 0. We then factorise both halves. So we can pull out 2x and then x minus 4. And here we can only pull out a 1. There's only one that is common as a factor of both. So we have 2x plus 1, x minus 4 equals 0. So either this bracket is 0 or that bracket is 0. Because then we've got 0 times something or something times 0 to make that 0. So if that bracket is 0, that means that x would have to be minus a half. You can then, you can think of it as adding 1 to both sides and then dividing both sides by 2. Or x equals 4 in order for that bracket to be 0. So there are two solutions, and we can do that using uh, factorising. Okay? Now the second method that I'm going to show is completing the square and solving. Now this isn't one that I would automatically go for completing the square because um, I've got a 2 in front of the x squared. I know I'm going to have difficulties when it comes to that 7 as well. Um, so my gut feeling is saying this is not the method that I would try to use in this case. But let's go through, let's make sure that we get to the same answer. So what we do is we pull the 2, factor the 2 out of the first two terms. So we're going to have two lots of x squared minus 7 halves x minus 4 equals 0. Now I'm going to complete the square and what's inside that bracket. So I've got x minus 7 quarters squared. We take away this number squared, so take away 49 over 16. Close the bracket, minus 4 equals 0. Then we multiply that 2 through to hit the bracket. And then we've got two lots of the minus 49 over 16, so minus 49 over 8. And then we've got this minus 4. Uh, so I might as well write that 
as a fraction with the same denominator here. So we're going to have 32 over 8. Um, that's 4 equals 0. So two lots of x minus 7 quarters squared. Um, this combining these minus 49 over 8 minus 32 over 8 is minus 81 over 8 equals 0. Then add the 81 over 8 to both sides. Then I need to divide through by 2. So 81 um, sixteenths. Then I can square root both sides. So x minus 7 quarters equals uh, plus or minus 9 quarters. So square rooting the top and the bottom. And then you can add the 7 quarters to both sides. So plus or minus 9 quarters plus 7 quarters. So if you've got 9, nine quarters plus 7 quarters, that's 16 quarters, which is 4. And if you've got minus 9 quarters plus 7 quarters, you get minus 2 quarters, which is minus a half. Whew. So, right, as I said, this uh, wouldn't be the way that I would want to solve um, this problem. Um, but ultimately, it works. Okay, It's really up to you if that's the way that you would want to do it. It's not... Uh, my favourite, uh, there's quite a number of steps involved. So then that leaves us with the quadratic formula. Now obviously the quadratic formula does require you to know the quadratic formula and how to substitute these values in. So the quadratic formula is uh, x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a where in this case a is 2, b is minus 7, and c is minus 4. So I substitute these values in. So x equals minus b, so 7, plus or minus b squared, so 49, take away 4 times 2 times minus 4, square rooted, all over 2a, so that's 4. So we get 7 plus or minus, well, we've got 49, uh, we've got 4, 4, so 16, times by 2 is 32, so 49 plus 32, because there's two minuses there, 49 plus 32 is 81. So 7 plus or minus 9 over 4. So 7 plus 9 is 16, divided by 4 is 4. And 7 take away 9 is minus 2, divided by 4 is minus a half. So that's a lot quicker than using the completed square form. Um, and in all three cases, we've got to precisely the same answer. OK, so really, when it comes down to it, if you need to show you're working, um, it is really up to you which way you solve a quadratic. I would usually check for factorising first, but in the end, if factorising doesn't work, I usually go straight to the formula unless it is already written in completed square form. Uh, only then do I actually solve it that way.